Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank, and this tutorial video gives you a flavour of what you can expect on our online courses. If you want to develop your music production skills further, head to www.pointblankmusicschool.com to find out more about this course, plus many more that we offer in London, Los Angeles, Ibiza and online. In this two-part series, we're going to focus on Beep. Now, the important thing to know is it's free, as it's included within Ableton Suite, and it allows you to create your own modular instruments in a very similar way to Reactor Blocks. The great thing with Beep is it's much easier to create complex instruments in comparison to programming from scratch within Max for Live. If you're interested in learning the basics of Max for Live, then do check out some of our early tutorials where we cover the main principles and create a basic synth and sampler. I'd also recommend you download the additional packages for Max for Live if they're not already installed on your system. Modular Synthesis forms a central part of our sound design modules at Point Blank, and once you learn the principles of Modular Synthesis, you can apply this to any similar hardware or software. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is select Max for Live here in the browser, and then open up Max Instrument, and then we'll drag Max Instrument onto a MIDI track. Now Max for Live will open up, sometimes this takes a bit of time. And for this tutorial I'm running Max 7.3.4. And now this is loaded, and then I'm going to click on the edit button here. And this opens up the Max for Live device into Max in a separate window. And the first time you do that in your project it might take a little while to open up the Max application, which we can see down here. Brilliant. So we don't actually need any of these objects here. I'm just going to delete those, so select over and delete. Let's just make this a bit bigger. So to use Beep, all you'll need to do is come down on this sidebar here and come down to the B icon, click where it says B, or Beep, and now we've got this menu with a whole range of different modules available to us. Okay, so what we're going to do to start with is just create a real simple subtractive synthesizer just so you can see how it works. So click on Oscillator, and in the Oscillator section here, you can see a whole range of oscillators ranging from granular, FM, carp plus, uh, phase vocoders, um, wavetable as well. I'm actually going to just choose oscillator. The other thing to note as well is down at the bottom it gives you a little description about what this module does. Okay, so this is a classic oscillator. You can click and drag or you can double click. It's up to you. And this now inserts uh, an oscillator. To hear that we'll need an output. So select output and then max for live output. So let's double click on this one and that's created. Okay, and the other thing I want is something to control it. So I'm going to choose a keyboard. This is quite handy as we can trigger notes using this keyboard here, also from the MIDI input as well. So let's rearrange these like this. Okay, so if I connect a signal up, then you hear a sound straight away. What I'm going to do is just turn this down a bit. And let's come back to Max. So Beep is a series of what's known as abstractions, but we'll call them modules. So each module has been created by someone else within Max for Life and packaged up into this nice little interface. Okay, and each of these has a specific function, very much like a modular synth. So let's connect this up and then we'll explain how this all works in a minute. Also, what I'm going to do is just come down to the Beep menu, go to Scope, and then we can choose voltmeter and also value. And we can see exactly what's going on here. Let's move these across a bit. Connect that up. Move it across a bit more. There we go. Okay, so if I play middle C on the keyboard, this is an analog synth, it would actually output a specific voltage from this output. Okay, now how this is represented um, within beep is at zero volts. Okay, if I go up the octave, then it's saying it's outputting one volt. Okay, you can see here by the voltmeter. Okay, and it also gives you information about what note it is uh, and also the frequency. If I go down the octave from C3, it says minus one volt. And if I go down by two octaves, it says minus two volts. Okay, so flying down this stripey cable is essentially just a constant signal. Coming out of this output of the oscillator, again, if this was an analog synth, it would be a varying voltage. Okay, if I connect up my voltage meter here, and so to hear this, I just need to lock the patch. To lock the patch, you can come down to this little padlock here, or the quick way to do it is to hold down the command key on a Mac and then just click in the space, and then I can unmute. 
Okay, so if I just slow this oscillator right down, you can now see this is basically moving in terms of a sawtooth because that's what I've got selected. If I choose a square wave, that's what it's flicking between. If I speed it up, then we hear a square wave. And now if I play the keyboard, I can also play the MIDI keyboard. Okay, and let's mute that. So obviously at the moment the sound is on constantly. What we want to do is set it up so the keyboard triggers. So I'm going to unlock the patch. I hold down command, click hit, get rid of the voltmeter and the value meter. Okay, and to control the volume, we're going to come up to level and then across to VCA. Okay, add that in. And I want to move these cables quite a useful way. It's hold down Alt, click and drag. Okay, and you can see there's this little green circle. Click on that and then it moves both those cables and then I lock them to the output there. Okay, um, then I'm going to need an envelope to control this. Uh, let's create an envelope. Envelope ADSR, let's just double click and you can see again a whole range of different envelopes. I can position that there. The signal of that is going to control the CV inlet. And you notice here, as I hover my mouse over certain inlets or outputs, you'll get a little hint explaining what it is. Okay, so the envelope needs to be triggered by gate signal, a bit like velocity. Okay, and the output of my oscillator, if we're going to do a subtractive synth, let's route it through a filter. Might as well add this in now. So, filter, I'm just going to use classroom filter. Now I'm running out of a bit of space here. Okay, if you want to shrink things down, um, you can use the Z key or Shift Z to zoom out. It just gives us a bit more space. Okay, so I'm going to go from the out of the oscillator to the in of the filter, and then the out of the filter to the signal in on that VCA. Okay, so now if I lock the patch, take off mute, and play the keyboard you can hear how the note no longer sustains on. Okay, let me just turn up the sustain there, faster attack. And we can choose different waveform, open up the filter. So here is our basic subtractive synthesizer. We can choose different filter types by selecting down here on the right hand side. You've got frequency and resonance controls. The envelope at the moment is controlling the VCA. And this particular envelope's got the ADSR, so if we increase the release, you can hear how the sound just sustains on a bit longer. So as you can see, Beep is a great way for exploring the possibilities of modular synthesis. And as long as you have the preview button enabled down here, you can hear any of the changes you make. However, you might want to use this as a normal device, and that's certainly possible. So you'll notice this dividing line here at the top of the screen. That relates to the height of your device window. Okay, so what I'm going to do is rearrange things. I don't need to see the keyboard. I need to see the oscillator and envelope. Okay, you might find that the envelope sits on top. If that's the case, then just control click and then choose center back. Okay, and then here is the filter. And I just want to shift this up and let's just save it okay call this beep bay sick synth replace the one I saved earlier close that down okay um, and then looking at here just need a couple of adjustments to this so let's just go in and edit it so oscillator needs to come down a bit and filter needs to go the other way that will do save close that looks much better okay so now if I play the keyboard uh, I've got a soft attack let's just speed that up and to control let's say the cutoff and resonance with a MIDI controller we can obviously just click on the MIDI button waggle a controller and do the same with resonance and resonance so now we can control and save presets just like you can with any other device.
So make sure you check out part two in this series where we'll look at controlling and manipulating sound using some of the other modules.